what's up hope all is well happy monday we are here for another monday morning devotional um it's a great week it's going to be a great week happy monday um again i'm expecting great things this week in spite of everything that's going on we speak uh, positivity we speak the hand of the lord we speak that we will draw closer to the lord and that um the favor of the Lord is on our lives. If you believe it, say amen. All right. So we are in our new series called The Legacy of God, where we're talking about how the kingdom of God shall reign forever, how his power shall reign forever, and um, how to just make that personal, how to make sure that us as believers today, what can we do to make sure that uh <laughs> We're still believing and walking with the Lord five years from now. Um, those of us who have children, what are we doing today to make sure that his reign, that his name still um, still lives in the generations to come? And again, our foundation scripture for this whole series is Psalm 145. You can go back and read this. Um, One generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. So, uh, again, like, what are we doing to share God uh, with this generation? Uh, and what are we doing to make sure that the next generation knows who the Lord is? Simply put, like I said, there's one quote um, that's used a lot in seminary. It says, you know, as a believer, our goal is to know God and to make him known. So what are you doing in your life to know God, to draw closer to the Lord? And what are you doing to make his, make sure that his name is known? to those around you, to those who encounter you, uh, to those who are in your family, and to make sure that his name lives, lives on forever and ever. Uh, today, I want to talk about adoption. Adoption. I want to talk about how we've all been adopted into the family of God, into the legacy of God. We've been adopted. Uh, we're no longer strangers. We're no longer enemies of God, for the Bible tells us that um, when Christ died on the cross, um, he bought us back. He, he, he bought us. The Bible refers to us as slaves to our sins, slaves to our nature. Uh, the Bible also tells us that we were once enemies to God, but now he calls us friends. Um, and we thank God for the shedding of the blood of Jesus, and we are now adopted. Um, <laughs> this thought I said, you know, we, we've, we've been adopted by God. Um, Calvary was, uh, the closing of the adoption. You know, if you have an adoption process, I'm going through an adoption right now and there's multiple closings, but, um, us being adopted by God, the closing happened at Calvary and, um, the signature was the blood of Jesus. It, it sealed our adoption. Uh, it sealed us being engrafted back into the family into the legacy of god and that's that's a beautiful thing to know that um i belong to god i belong to god and he he saw me in my worst state he saw me even before i got on the scene he saw me and he didn't wait for me to get it right but he 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 bought me with his blood and for every believer we've been bought uh, with the price. Um, and, the, and the beautiful thing about this is that we don't have to earn his love. Uh, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Uh, what God has in store for us, uh, salvation. There's nothing that we can earn. Salvation is nothing. I can't be good enough to get it. It's a gift that he gives me. Redemption, adoption, his love is something that he gives me. There's nothing that I can do. I can't be good enough to get it. Because you know what? <laughs> there's, because there's nothing good enough that I can do to get it, there's nothing bad enough that I can do to lose it. There's nothing too wicked. There's nothing too low down that you could do to lose it. When he saved you, he saved you forever. He's not like man. He's he's not fickle. He doesn't take it back. 
he he gives it because he wants to give it and he has to give it and he has a lot of it he has a lot of love to give so he he doesn't give you his love and he doesn't take it back even when he disciplines us when he corrects us it's a form of love and his discipline is not to uh make us earn him but his discipline is there because we already have him and for those of you who have children you definitely understand this, that when you have to discipline your kids, it's because you want what's best for them. It's not because you're trying to hurt their feelings. It's not because you're trying to suck all the fun away. It's, I'm disciplining you because I want what's best for you. And I don't want anything to harm you. So this discipline, these boundaries that I'm setting in place, is actually for your good. So it's actually a form of love. Uh, we bear his name. We, we bear his name. And we're not just servants, but we're sons and daughters. We're, we're, we're sons and daughters. And the beautiful thing about that, and I'm wrapping up already. I'm so proud of me. I'm wrapping up already is that he wants us. Just say that God wants me. He doesn't need me. <laughs> he is it, more than a need. Because if somebody needs you, that means that there's some type of uh, obligation tied to it. But uh, he wants me. That means that there's a desire with no attachments. He wants me even when I don't want him. Because truth be told, I don't always want him. My flesh don't always want him. My attitude doesn't always want to. Uh, the nature of my sin, the nature of my humanity, nothing about it wants God. I need God to want God. <laughs> it takes God to want God. He has to give me the desire for him. There's nothing in me that wants him. But the beautiful thing about it is that he wants me. Imagine that every day that you wake up, and the first thing that God thinks about is, man, I, I really want him. I really want to spend time with him. I really want to pursue him. I really want to uh, bless him. That'll change your prayer life because you will understand that my communication and my walk with God is not out of obligation. You ever been in a relationship or a friendship or any type of thing where it's like when you go to... Uh, <laughs> communicate or hang out with a person you're like uh i really don't want to do this it becomes an obligation but for people who are genuinely in your life maybe it can be family marital um where you spend time with them because you want to and you desire them and you desire the relationship that's how it is with god serving him shouldn't be an obligation now it could be a discipline and just because we just need laser focus sometimes, yes. But the posture and the heart of it should never be, I have to. Because if you find yourself always saying, I have to, then um, you're, you may have to want to check your foundation there. You may, you may want to check your foundation because soon enough, that have to is going to run out. That have to is going to get tiring. That high, that have to mindset is going to leave you depleted to where you begin to uh, resent the things of God because you had to. But once you understand the love of God and how he pursues you, his pursuit to you is not a have to. His pursuit of you is not an obligation. Like really, really think about that. He wants you like he, he wants to be in your life. He wants to heal you. He wants to make a way. He wants to lavish you with his love. He wants to save you. It's, it's, it was never an obligation for him. It, it was never, uh, oh, I got I to gotta rescue them again. No, 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 no. He, he wanted you. He wanted, Jesus wanted to leave heaven, to come down to earth, to die on the cross, to save you. Now, did it feel good to his flesh? No, but because he wanted you that bad, he did it. All of this is because he wanted you. 
Or, or why am I saved today? Because God wants me. Why do you go to church every week? Because God wants me. Why do you pray and fast? Because God wants me. Why do you serve God? Because God wants me. How do you fall down? Uh, how do you make mistakes and get back up? Because God wants me. I mean, it's not. It's not that I love Him, but it's that He loves me. He wants me. That's adoption. I'm going through the adoption process now with Flora, and it's not an obligation. It's I love my daughter. I I, I want her officially in my family. Is 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 that simple? It's a want. It's not a need. I don't need children. Just like I, 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 I desire her. I want her. So I'm going through the adoption process. Um, let's just read a couple of scriptures just to support this. I have about three scriptures, but if you ever go and just Google scriptures about adoption, you'll see a list of them come up. The first one is First John three, verses one through three. Um, and all of these are out of the New Living Translation. It says, see how much our father loves us, for he calls us his children, and that is what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize that we are God's children because they don't know him. Dear friends, we are already God's children, but he has not yet shown us that we will be like Christ when Christ appears. But we do know that we will be like him. For we will see him as he really is, and all who have this eager expectation will keep themselves pure just as he is pure. Romans eight fourteen and 16 says, For all who are led of the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received the Spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you have received God's Spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we can call him Abba Father, for his spirit joins our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. Last one, 2 Corinthians 6, verse 18, it says, And I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So we have a lot of support to support the fact that we've been adopted by God. We are now in his family. Uh, two things I want you to just think about this week. Number one, know that you belong to God. Know that you've been adopted, that you've been joined to him, that you are now part of the family of God. And allow this thought to heal rejection of your, in your life. Um, we've all suffered rejection, whether it's been from man or groups of people. Or sometimes we reject ourselves. <laughs> Uh, we have a value issue with accepting ourselves, but allow these scriptures, uh, allow the Holy Spirit to heal that rejection in you and know that you've been adopted. Know that you belong. And the second thing I want you to do is just view God's correction as protection. When God corrects you, when there are scriptures in the word of God that corrects you, uh, whether it can be sin in your life, certain mindsets, generational curses, um, whatever it is in your life that you feel like God may be correcting you on, don't approach it with a, a loathe, oh, a loathe, you know, don't approach it with an offended heart, you know, offended by God. Um, now, I'm not, the word of God will offend, it will offend your flesh. Uh, because flesh doesn't want to submit to the things of God. But beyond that, allow yourself to know that God's correction is what's best for me. There's things that I want to do in my life, things I want to partake in. And I know God is just like, it's a hard no. But I know that no is not him keeping something from me. But it's him trying to protect me. Okay. So that's your homework. Know that you belong to him. And know that his correction is protection. All right. God bless.